I can answer that in two words. Why not? I have no idea what six stone and weight is. <laughs> uh. Although Karen Carpenter's lone marriage was as tragic as the end of her life, she actually had quite an exciting sex life before it all went awry. Does that seem surprising? Well, why should it when she has sang so beautifully about love and sex? Before her mental illness led her to an early grave, Karen Carpenter actually dated quite an impressive roster of men. Who were these men, and how did these relationships shape her? One of Karen's very first romantic connections was with her high school classmate, Frankie Chavez. This was an extra special connection because Frankie was the one who helped ignite Karen's musical spark. See, Karen initially had no interest in music, but only signed up for her school marching band to get out of gym class. Once there, she was given the glockenspiel by her instructor, a cumbersome instrument that she quite hated. It wasn't until Karen saw Frankie playing the drums that she saw an instrument she was quite interested in. His play impressed her so much that it drew her closer to him. Frankie played an instrumental part in convincing Karen's parents to buy her a Ludwig drum set, the same type of drum set owned by Ringo Starr of the Beatles. Though it was quite a costly investment at the time, Frankie assured his parents that he would help her learn to play it. Well, as it turned out, Karen was a natural at playing the drums, so much so that Frankie didn't have to spend much time teaching her. Well, naturally, this meant they had time for other things. A pure and sweet romance bloomed between them, defining Karen for many years to come. Even though Karen and Frankie eventually went their separate ways, their relationship taught her how to be a woman. She gained a crucial perspective about love that expressed itself in much of her songwriting. This allowed her to connect with many men and women across the world. And that's part of what made her musical career such a huge success. Now, success is a pretty strong aphrodisiac, one that drew some of the most powerful men in Hollywood toward Karen like moths to a flame. Karen Carpenter was never the homecoming queen type, but the moment her career blew up, so did her dating prospects. One of the first notable showbiz people she ever dated was Alan Osmond. The singer, who was quite attractive in his day, was a member of the family music group, The Osmonds. Though Osmond courted Karen for a sweet while, nothing came of their relationship. As a matter of fact, soon after they split up, Osmond married Suzanne Pinegar and went on to have eight children with her. Osmond was eager to settle down, but for some reason, he did not think Karen was suitable. Of course, at the time, most of Karen's personal issues were largely unknown and were relegated to trashy tabloid news. Osmond decide Karen also dated English record producer Terry Ellis. This relationship stands out for Karen because he was also her manager at the time. Again, nothing came of their relationship, but then he was not the first producer she dated. A few years before Karen and Ellis got together, she was involved in quite a steamy relationship with Mike Curb. At the time, Curb was a bit of a superstar himself, having produced Sammy Davis Jr.'s The Candyman. Curb was introduced to Karen by his sister. The two hit it off immediately. The relationship between Karen and Curb was very passionate, so much so that he doesn't even understand why they broke up. While they were dating, he was intimately aware of her eating disorder, but he had his own cute and special way of dealing with it. See, anytime Karen would not eat, Curb would drive her from her home all the way to Knott's Berry Farm theme park. The mashed potatoes and fried chicken there was one of the only meals capable of whetting her infamous appetite. Karen and Curb grew apart from each other when she went on tour. Even so, they remained good friends. Her eventual death was such a huge shock to him, he was in denial about how something so terrible could happen to her. While on tour in England, Karen got into a serious relationship with John Adrian. At the time, Adrian worked for the BBC. Even though the love and passion between them were evident, that was not enough to sustain a relationship. Due to Karen's brutal schedule as a superstar, she could not stay in England to continue to nurture the love between them. When Karen returned to America, she rebounded from her recent heartbreak with one of the most handsome men in Hollywood at the time. Steve Martin was quite familiar with the Carpenter family as he used to open for them when he was still up and coming. As a matter of fact, Karen took him on a date to the Grammy Awards one year. Though he adored her deeply, Karen's brother got in the way of their relationship. See, Steve and Karen were due to go out on a date during one of her off nights. However, her brother, Richard, suddenly had a change of heart he quite harshly ordered her to go to work, leaving Steve hanging. Richard, who was dependent on his far more talented sister to sustain his career, was known to be quite stern at times. Karen Carpenter dated a few other men, such as Tony Danza, Mark Harmon, Bill Hudson, and Tom Baylor. However, the man she eventually settled down with 
was not in the showbiz scene at all. At the time, the music industry had taken quite a toll on Karen, and she opted to date a real estate developer as a breath of fresh air. Unfortunately, this relationship was doomed to fail from the start. In April of 1980, Karen met Tom Burris, who was 10 years her senior. Karen's mother was against the relationship from the start, largely due to the age gap between them. Despite her mother's protestations, or maybe because of them, Karen fell head over heels for Tom Burris. The two of them entered a whirlwind romance that drove the tabloids mad. Because Tom Burris was not in the showbiz scene, there was not much information about him out there. As a result, the tabloids printed all sorts of dubious reports about him. Most of these pieces had weak evidence and were easily disproved. But that did not mean Tom was a saint either. Just two months after they started dating, Tom and Karen were engaged to get married. Though Karen's mother opposed their union, she decided to put her feelings aside and get involved for her daughter's sake. Unfortunately, the night before the wedding, Tom disclosed to Karen that he had had a vasectomy and would not be able to bear any children. This infuriated Karen so much that she wanted to call off the whole show. Ironically, it was Karen's mother Agnes who stopped her from doing such a thing. Agnes, who never wanted Karen and Tom to get married, could not stand to call off the wedding. She had already spent so much time and energy bringing the wedding to life. Besides, the invitations had been sent out and guests were already flying in, and such a high-profile cancellation at such a late notice would be a scandal for the ages. That was how Karen Carpenter and Tom Burris came to tie the knot. Their union began with a lie and just kept getting worse and worse. What happened was that Tom Burris was a spendthrift and blew a lot of Karen's money on useless luxuries. The relationship between Karen and her husband turned loveless very fast. Some people speculate that Tom's attitude contributed greatly to Karen's death. Sure, her anorexia nervosa and bulimia had ceased to be secrets, but were they the only things that drove her over the edge? The truth is, at the start of Karen's relationship with Tom, she was so happy that she regained a healthy relationship with food. However, when things turned sour, she fell back on her old bad habits. If Tom had truly loved and cared for Karen, who knows how her life would have turned out. Instead, her fragile heart gave out when she was only 32 years old. The tragedy of Karen Carpenter is a story that will haunt music history for decades. However, her sex life reveals there was way more to her than her problems. She had several healthy relationships with attractive men, which enriched her life and improved her songwriting. Were it not for these flings, entanglements, and romances, who knows if the Carpenters would have been such a big hit. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.